mutashabihi. Yani he said, yajiduna riqqatan. When they hear a muhkam and a mutashabih, when they hear a muhkam, a verse or a hadith which is muhkam, they will have leniency and softness towards this. And when they hear a mutashabih, a hadith or, or a verse which, ha- has ambigu- which has an ambiguous meaning or multiple meanings, yahlikun, they destroy themselves or they become destroyed. Okay? So we have muhkam and we have mutashabih. A muhkam is a verse or a hadith in which the, the truth is clear from, from the wording of the actual nas. The truth is clear. Um, although there may be another possible meaning, but that meaning is usually either non-existent or weak. Whereas a mutashabih is a, the nas or the dilala of the nas is ambiguous. It can mean, can have more than one meaning. Okay, so it's mutashabih. So the qa'id and the principle is نَحْنُ نَرُدُّ الْمُتَشَابِهِ إِلَى الْمُحْكَمُ If we see a mutashabih, a nas which is ambiguous, we always go back to the nas which is muhkam. Um, the dilala of this dalil, basically, the reason why Shaykh al-Islam, Muhammad al-Abdul Hab, rahimahullah ta'ala, mentioned this dalil is basically because um, of the fact that this person, Ibn Abbas, re- refuted this man for having disbelieved in the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remember the chapter is pertaining to the names and the attributes uh, of Allah. Also, here in this actual narration here, this is a narration which refutes those people who claim that the terminology of ism and sifa is a terminology fabricated by Shaykh <coughs> al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah or Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab or ibn al-Qayyim or ibn Kathir. Okay? Because here, this author, ابن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنه أنه رأى رجلا انتفض لما سمع حديثا عن في الصفات the word صفات is mentioned by ابن عباس في القرون المفضلة in يعني in in, in the time of um, the تابعين and the صحابة so this means that this كلمة صفة just like توحيد is a legislative word it's not a word that has been fabricated by uh, the يعني later scholars دليل number four is the author of Mujahid, um, and it is considered to be da'if. Okay, this author basically explains to us how this verse descended. وَهُمْ يَكْفُرُونَ بِالرَّحْمَنِ But the author is considered to be da'if. Chapter 41. <clears throat> so chapter 41. باب قول الله تعالى يعرفون نعمة الله ثم ينكرونها Chapter pertaining to the statement of Allah يعرفون نعمة الله ثم ينكرونها يعني they know or they acknowledge Allah's blessings and then they disbelieve in these blessings Okay, so this chapter explains to us the importance of ascribing all blessings, all ni'am to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it also explains to us the hukum and the ruling of, of certain statements that basically contradict this verse. Statements like if a person says, a person says, I would like to thank, مثلاً, my parents. Um, uh, يعني, if it wasn't for them, I would not have passed the exam. Or if it wasn't for the pilot of this plane, this, uh, this, this, this plane would have crashed. If it wasn't for... Uh, if it wasn't for, for the for the dog barking, the thief would have been would have stolen or we would have been burgled. مثلا. These type of statements. What's the ruling on these type of statements? So he says, قال مجاهد مجاهد explains the the verse and he says ما معناه هو قول الرجل هذا مالي ورثته عن آبائي. It is a man saying and this verse is describing a man saying that this wealth belongs to me. I inherited it from my parents. وقال عون ابن عبد الله يقولون لولا فلان لم يكن كذا. And عون ابن عبد الله he says they say if it wasn't for so and so then this would have happened. If it wasn't for so and so then this would have happened. وقال ابن قتيبة ابن قتيبة ابن قتيبة then said يقولون هذا بشفاعة آلهتنا. They say that this is as a result, يعني this blessing came to us, this is the mushrikun and the pagans, they say that this blessing came to us 
as a result of the intercession of our Ali, of our gods and deities. وَقَالَ أَبُوْ الْعَبَّاسِ أَبُوْ الْعَبَّاسِ He says, بعد حديث زيد بن خالد ابن تيمي He says, الذي فيه أن الله تعالى قال أصبح من عبادي مؤمن بي وكافر Does anyone remember which, which chapter we came across this hadith in? Does anyone remember? باب ما جاء في الاستسقاء إيش بالأنواء أليس كذلك؟ Go back to that chapter if you have it. Go back to it and check. باب ما جاء في الاستسقاء بالأنواء. This hadith we we came across this hadith there. If I'm not mistaken. So, it's there, yeah? Hadith Zayd ibn Khalid. Naam, Hadith Zayd ibn Khalid, naam. So, we, came, we, we already came across this verse, uh, sorry, this, this um, dalil in that particular chapter. Um, naam. وهذا, then he says, Abu al-Abbas, he says, regarding this particular hadith, the hadith of Zayd ibn Khalid, and you have the hadith in front of you in that chapter, he says, he says, وهذا كثير في الكتاب والسنة. And this, he says, this is common in the kitab and the sunnah. يَذُمُّ سُبْحَانَهُ مَنْ يُضِيفُ إِنْعَامَهُ إِلَى غَيْرِهِ وَيُشْرِكُ بِهِ Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he rebukes and he, يعني, he considers as blameworthy anyone who ascribes his blessings to other than him and associates partners in his blessings. قال بعض السلف and then he says some of the salaf said هو كقولهم it is similar to them saying كانت الريح طيبة it is similar to a person saying the wind is gentle today the wind is nice today والسلاء والملاح حاذقا and the sailor or the pilot is proficient this pilot is very proficient this sailor is very proficient ونحو ذلك and similar to these مِمَّا هُوَ جَارٍ عَلَىٰ أَلْسِنَةِ كَثِيرٍ Similar to these statements which are common on the, upon the tongues of many people. Look at how our religion protects Tawheed. Even in sentences, even in statements. That if a person ascribes a particular blessing to other than Allah, then this is a deficiency in their Tawheed. Because the rih, this wind, who is the creator of this wind? Allah is the creator of this wind. So instead of saying, for example, instead of saying the weather is nice today, ascribe this to Allah and say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with beautiful weather today. Instead of saying the wind is gentle today, there's a nice breeze, say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent us a nice breeze. Instead of saying if there's turbulence, for example, uh, instead of saying that the pilot is a proficient pilot, say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with a good pilot. Always ascribe it to Allah. Instead of saying... This wealth, I inherited it from my parents. Say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala left me this wealth. Allah gave me this wealth through my parents. Do you understand? Always make sure, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Your tongue should be moist with the remembrance of Allah. So everything you should ascribe to Allah. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُ وَهَذَا مِن شُكْرِ النِّعْمَةِ if you thank Allah, if you are grateful to Allah, لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ Allah says, I will increase you in His blessing. So look at our righteous predecessors, our salaf, how they understood this verse. يَعْرِفُونَ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ يُنْكِرُونَهَا This is their, their understanding. Mujahid, who was, who was the student of Ibn Abbas, he said, it is a man saying that this is my wealth. وَرِفْتُهُ عَنْ آبَائِي I inherited it from my parents. It is similar nowadays, for example, to a person who has, who has a good job, who يعني, has a, a good house, um, has wealth, um, and they say, this is, I worked hard to, be, to get here. I worked hard to get here. I've been working 10 years, 15 years, and I got promoted. And you know, now I'm enjoying myself. Like people who are retired, now I'm enjoying the fruits of my labor. Do you understand? This is extreme. This statement is extremely dangerous because if it wasn't for Allah, 
they would not have uh, drank a single cup of water on this earth, let alone have a house or, or have a car or have all of these blessings that they ascribe themselves to. They ascribe these blessings to themselves, to their own power. This is why we say, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. There is no power, there is no might except with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the maqsood of the tarjama or the objective of this tarjama is um, to clarify that ascribing a blessing to other than Allah negates tawheed. Any blessing, any blessing, whether it is wealth, whether it is knowledge, whether it is either clothes on your back, uh, it could be anything. Whether it is a calamity that was about to strike you and and alhamdulillah, يعني, someone else caused or was a reason or was a suburb for this calamity to uh, يعني, evade you or for, this, for you to be saved from this calamity. You always ascribe it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> so, إضافة النعم إلى غير الله قسمان Ascribing blessings to other than Allah are two, are two types. Okay? The first is to ascribe these blessings with your tongue. Only, not with your heart. To, and we're talking about ascribing blessings to other than Allah, not to Allah. Okay? So to ascribe these, these blessings with your tongue only. Not believing in your heart that these blessings came from this individual. This is shirk asghar. This is minor shirk. Okay? This is considered to be minor shirk. Number two, <clears throat> it is... To ascribe these blessings to other than Allah with your tongue and with your heart. Yani to, to, to actually believe that this person was the reason why this blessing came to you in the first place. It was actually your parents. If it wasn't for your parents, you would not have method in this wealth. And you, you disregard Allah entirely. This is shirk akbar. Okay, this is major shirk. The author mentions Dalilain. He mentions two evidences. Number one, the statement, اللَّهِ ثُمَّ يُنْكِرُونَهَا The Dilal of this is that, um, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he, يعني here in the verse, he mentions that they acknowledge the ni'mah, the blessing. They actually acknowledge the, the blessing. They know that it is a ni'mah. Okay? So this is a, these are a people who actually acknowledge the blessing. They know it is a ni'mah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them with kufr and with inkar. He describes them with disbelieving in the actual blessing. And then at the end Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَكْثَرُهُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ Most of them are disbelievers. So what do you think of a person who doesn't even acknowledge that they are in a blessing? Who are, يعني, a person who's always blaming or who's always moaning about their situation. The, Allah is describing a people who actually acknowledge and know that what they have is a ni'mah and a blessing. What about, the, what about those people who actually have a blessing, who actually live in, alhamdulillah, يعني, they have a home, they have a roof above, uh, on, on their, uh, يعني, above their heads, they eat every day, they don't miss a meal, they, uh, are, يعني, they, they're healthy, reasonably healthy. And subhanAllah, they are still complaining. They're still complaining about something missing from their lives. They don't have what's known as qana'ah, contentment, to be content with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. Because qana'ah and contentment is, if you're given qana'ah and contentment, you've been given the whole world, ad dunya kullaha. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he says, مَنْ أَصْبَحَ آمِنًا فِي سَرْبِهِ مُعَافًا فِي بَدَنِهِ وَعِنْدَهُ قُوتُ يَوْمِهِ فَكَأَنَّمَا حِيزَتْ لَهُ الدُّنْيَا بِحَذَافِيرِهَا Whoever wakes up in the morning healthy and he has the provisions of food for that day, just that day only, not the next day, just that day only, and um, uh, it is as though this person has been given the whole of the dunya. The whole of the dunya has been given to this person. Subhanallah. So this verse also teaches us to be content with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. So that's the first dalil. The 
Dalil number two is the hadith of Zayd ibn Khalid, where he says, Asbaha min ibadi mu'minun bi wa kafir al hadith. Muttafaqun alayh. And we've, we, we've already explained the hadith in a previous uh, chapter. And we mentioned in Bab Ma Ja'af al Isisqab al Anwa that the kufr that is mentioned in this hadith is Akbar or Asghar? Asghar. Okay, that the kufr is considered to be Asghar. Okay, they are considered to be Muslims. However, they ascribed with their tongues the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They ascribed with their tongues a uh, particular blessing to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Chapter 42. باب فلا تجعلوا لله اندادا وانتم تعلمون So this chapter basically um, is teaching us the dangers of setting up rivals with Allah or equals with Allah He says Allah says قول الله تعالى فلا تجعلوا لله اندادا وانتم تعلمون نعم يعني do not make equals with Allah while you know wa antum ta'lamun fala taj'alu lillahi andadan do not make equals with Allah do not set up equals or rivals with Allah while you have knowledge of this qala ibn abbas fi al-aya al-andad ibn abbas says the meaning of al-andad he says huwa shirk it is shirk yani do not set up partners with him then he says akhfa min dabib an-naml ala safa'in sawda في ظلمة الليل. Then he says that shirk is more inconspicuous; it is more hidden than a dabib uh, al than a black ant crawling on a black stone in the darkness of the night. Subhanallah. He says that shirk can enter upon a person, and it is it is more hidden than a black ant. On walking or crawling on a black rock, on the surface of a black rock, in the middle of the night, in the darkness of the night. Can, can you hope to see this ant? If, if you were sitting next to this rock, if you, had, yeah, and if you were literally there next to the rock, you would not know. You wouldn't even hear it, let alone see it. So shirk, the Prophet Ibn Abbas says, he is more hidden, is more inconspicuous than this. Ant, subhanallah. Then he says, وَهُوَ أَن تَقُولُ And it is for you to say, وَاللَّهِ وَحَيَاتِكَ يَا فُلَانَ وَحَيَاتِي يعني وَاللَّهِ by Allah وَحَيَاتِكَ by your life يَا فُلَانَ أو, أو, أو so and so يعني this, uh, referring to a female وَحَيَاتِي or يعني by يعني my life taking an oath by his own life taking an oath by the life of a person that he cherishes, مثلاً. So this is considered to be shirk. وتقول, or he says, or for you to say, remember the Salaf, subhanAllah, when they, when they give us examples pertaining to a verse, we have to, these are very important examples, because these examples help us to actually understand the verse. So Ibn Abbas is giving us examples of the verse, فَلَا تَجْعَلُوا لِلَّهِ اِنْدَادُ وَانْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ He gave us two examples so far. Wallahi, وَحَيَاتِكَ يَا فُلَانَ وَحَيَاتِي وَحَيَاتِ وَتَقُولَ And he says, this is the next example, he says, لَوْ لَا كُلَيْبَةُ هَذَا لَأَتَانَ اللُّصُوصِ If it wasn't for these canines or these dogs, then we would have been burgled. Okay? وَلَوْ لَا الْبَطُّ فِي الدَّارِ لَأَتَى اللُّصُوصِ And if it wasn't for the duck, but is duck, sir? If it wasn't for the duck, we would have been burgled. The thieves would have come into our home. Because what happens when a thief, when a dog, for example, who's guarding a house is disturbed by a thief, it's going to bark. And then the inhabitants of the house are going to wake up. Do you understand? So to say this, Ibn Abbas is saying, is considered to be shirk, subhanAllah. وقول الرجل لصاحبه and a person saying to his to his companion ما شاء الله وشئت 
يعني ما شاء الله whatever Allah wills وشئت يعني whatever Allah wills will happen وشئت and whatever you will will also happen وقول الرجل and a, the statement of a person لولا الله uh, وفلان يعني if it wasn't for Allah and so and so uh, this would have happened these are all examples by whom? by Ibn Abbas he says لا تجعل فيها فلانا do not mention fulan. Just say Lawl Allah, if it wasn't for Allah. He says, هذا كله به شرك. He says, all of these are, sh- all of these are considered to be shirk. يعني minus shirk. How do we know it's minus shirk? Because of how Ibn Abbas said, به شرك. He didn't say, هذا كله شرك. He said, هذا كله به شرك. And the قاعدة, the principle is, if ever you see به شرك, هذا به شرك, from أحد السلف, then that means that this is considered to be Minor uh, shirk, shirk al asr. What did I just say? No. Uh, the principle is that any time they come be shirk, no. it means that it's minor shirk. It's minor shirk. No. Asand. Taib. Rawahu ibn Abi Hatim. And then he says, An Umar al Khattab, an Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من حلف بغير الله فقد كفر أو أشرك. Umar al Khattab he says, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says. Man halafa bi ghayri Allah, whoever takes an oath by other than Allah, then this person has committed kufr or shirk. Rawahu al-Tirmidhi wa Hassan wa Sahha wa al-Hakim. Qala ibn Mas'ud, ibn Mas'ud said, La'an ahlifa billahi kathiban ahabu ilayya min an ahlifa bi ghayrihi sadiqan. That I swear or take an oath by Allah, يعني in a state of uh, deception, is more beloved to me that I take an oath by other than him while being truthful or honest. وعن حذيفة عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال he said لا تقول ما شاء الله شاء فلان do not say whatever Allah wills will happen and whatever so and so wills will happen ولكن قولوا however say ما شاء الله whatever Allah wills will happen ثم and then ما شاء فلان يعني and then whatever so and so wills will happen يعني there has to be ثم not wow رواه أبو داود بسند صحيح وجاء وجاء عن إبراهيم النخعي أنه يكره أن يقول الرجل إبراهيم النخعي he used to dislike or consider as حرام because remember الكراهة عند السلف للتحريم الكراهة عند السلف مكروه means حرام he says أنه يكره أن يقول الرجل he says that he used to dislike or consider as impermissible that a man should say أعوذ بالله وبك I seek refuge in Allah and in you ويجوز أن يقول and it is permissible for this person to say بالله ثم بك يعني أعوذ بالله I seek refuge in Allah, and then after Allah, I seek refuge in you. ويقول, this is permissible, يعني. ويقول, لولا الله ثم فلان, or he can say, if it wasn't for Allah, and then if it wasn't for so and so. ولا تقول, and do not say, لولا الله وفلان, if it wasn't for Allah, and so and so. There has to be ثم للتراخي. يعني, there has to be ثم للتراخي. So the ترجمه, this basically, this chapter, the maqsood of this ترجمه, is to clarify... Um, the impermissibility of setting up equals or rivals with Allah. And the word al-andad is the plural of nid. And nid basically um, has two meanings. Okay, and niddu lahu ma'nayan. Al-ma'na al-awwal, yani al-mithl wal-mutashabih. And nid means equal. Setting up equals with Allah. That's the first meaning of a nid. The second meaning of a nid, يعني الضد, it means a rival, setting up rivals with Allah. Both of them are correct. So a nid has to how many meanings? Two meanings. Equal and rival. Okay? And kilahuma mamnu. Both of them are incorrect. And to set up equals or rivals with, with Allah is two types. Number one, it is to basically to, to give something from the hukuk of Allah, from, from the rights of Allah, which is connected to the minimum required iman to other than, than Allah. It is to give something which is considered to be the rights of Allah to other than Allah, mimma yata'allaqu bi asli al-iman, and it's connected to the minimum required iman. So that means that this is what? Shirk Akbar or Asghar? Akbar. طيب. The second is basically the second type of uh, setting up equals or rivals with Allah 
is to give something that belongs to Allah, to other than Allah, in those things that are connected to the perfect obligatory Iman. And this becomes Mada Shirk Asghar. Shirk Asghar. It's not the minimum required Iman, it's the obligatory Iman. Now. So the first one is Shirk Akbar. The first one is major shirk, the second one is minor shirk. The first one is major shirk because it's, it's connected to <laughs> aslul iman. It's connected to the minimum required iman. The second one is, is minor shirk because, it, because it's connected to um, al iman al wajib or kamal al iman al wajib, the perfect obligatory iman. Okay? Now. Basically, the, uh, like when the Prophet Sallallahu he says, "La um, ahadukum hatta ma The Prophet negated faith, sah? The faith that the Prophet negated is it the minimum required iman? If we say it's the minimum required iman, then that means whoever commits this, whoever doesn't love for his brother that which he loves for himself, has co- has fallen into kufr or shirk. No, that's not the case. This negation is the perfect, ob- the obligatory iman. It's wajib upon you to love for yourself, sorry, to love for your brother, that which you love for yourself. It's wajib upon you. And if you do not do this, then that means that you have sinned. That means your tawheed has become deficient, as a result, or your iman has become deficient. Do you understand? So, you, so that's basically one example. With regards to the rights of Allah, from the rights of Allah is that we ascribe... We ascribe to Allah all blessings with our tongue and with our heart. Sah? What if someone ascribes to Allah a particular blessing, oh, sorry, 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 ascribes to other than Allah a, a particular blessing with his tongue? Then this person, not the heart, the tongue, this person has taken something that belongs to Allah and given it to other than Allah. But he hasn't reached the stage of kufr or shirk. It's connected to his, the, the perfect obligatory iman. Do you understand? When is it connected to the minimum required iman? It's connected when it's with the heart, when he ascribes it with the heart. You understand? No. So basically this chapter and the previous chapter, these chapters are basically teaching us of the day of يعني, shirk fil alfad, يعني, shirk with tongue, with statements. Because a person can fall into shirk with particular statements. And, and Ibn Abbas gave us all of these examples, يعني, ta'ala anhu, for a person to say, Wallahi wa hayatika, Wallahi wa hayati, lawla kulayba tu hada, la atana musus, etc. He mentions five evidences. <coughs> the first, فَلَا تَجْعَلُوا لِلَّهِ أَنْدَادًا وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ so we know what this, this verse means. So this basically is nahi huna li tahrim. Fala tajalu Allah negates. He says, do not do this. Do not set up rivals with Allah. Do not do not set up equals with Allah. So this this basically prohibition indicates to tahrim, indicates to impermissibility. So this basically and we know that andad is shirk. Who said andad is shirk? Ibn Abbas. Okay, Ibn Abbas, remember, it's in the Nas. Kulluhu bihi shirk. Do you understand? So, it's, we know that and that is shirk. Okay? So that's the f- dalil number one. <coughs> so, we know this, يعني, you, we know that this is considered to be shirk asr with the statement of Ibn Abbas. Because the tafsir of a sahabi, the explanation of a companion regarding a particular verse is considered to be evidence or proof. Is regarded to be evidence or proof unless it is contradicted by another companion or the statement of another companion. Do you understand? If there's no, if, if, the, if, the, if no other companion contradicted this companion in explaining a particular verse, then we know that their kalam or their statement is proof and it is considered to be evidence and hujjah. Especially if it is considered, if, it is, if, it, if it's something pertaining to aqidah or tawheed or shirk. 
which is the case here.